This video is sponsored by Brush Galaxy. Okay, welcome to another iPad painting tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to paint a dramatic sunset. For those people that perhaps have struggled with skies in the past, I'm going to try and make it as simple as possible so you can follow along and still make it dramatic. So I'm using the app Procreate and I've got an iPad Pro. I've opened an A4 default canvas size. You'll notice that I've pre-selected some colours here. If you want to use these exact colours, there is a link down in the video description for my Patreon. Follow the link, you can download the colours there for free. Next to the link are some codes. If you go to this section within colors to the value section type in the code in here one at a time press enter there's a little color up there, up there tap into this area and you can piece together your own version of the color palette so in terms of the brushes i'm going to be using the airbrushing brushes i'm going to be using the soft brush i've not changed the brush in anyway so it's just the default version and we're going to go to the elements section because i'm trying to make this as easy as possible for you we're going to go to the clouds texture brushes so if you have a go and you're really pleased with the results make sure to follow me on instagram and tag me so that i get to see them and also join my facebook group and share them with the community there as well the links for both those things are down in the video description too okay so the first thing we're going to do on layer one we're going to go to colors we're going to pick the first color and we're just going to drag it from the that color circle into the area just going to flood the area get rid of the whites makes it a little bit nicer as a background as a place to start from we're going to go to the layers create another layer layer two go back to our colors i'm going to select the second color along go to the brushes use the airbrushing and the soft brush and we're going to put the brush at about 15% size and quite high at about 80% opacity and we're going to aim this about two thirds of the way up we're going to make this quite broad quite substantial and we're going to add other colors near the bottom anyway we don't want to go in all the way to the top but we're getting quite close then we're going to go to the adjustments Gaussian blur affect the whole layer and we'll just blur it in to about 40% and you'll notice we've still got some of the blue preserved at the top, but we're getting quite a lot of this yellow merging with it. We'll create another layer, go back to our colors. We'll select the third color in this time, which if we go to color disc, you can see is an orange, but it is slightly muted. We'll keep the brush settings the same at 15% and 80% opacity. We'll go for this bottom area here. And if you see looking at it, it's just about halfway and we'll take this color down a little bit too. In fact, we'll take it all the way to the bottom of the canvas. We're gonna have another color there, but it's okay to start with quite a lot of this color. Then we'll go to the adjustments again, go to the Gaussian blur, affect the whole layer. And again, we're gonna slide it across a little bit further to about 60% this time. Go back to the layers, create another layer, go back to the colors, go to the fourth color in, which if you click on it and go to the color disc, You'll see it's quite a grayed version. It's within the yellow, almost yellowy green, but it is a grayed out version. Now we're still on the soft brush. We're gonna turn it down substantially to about 6% and to about 10% opacity. And I'm just gonna start gradually tapping and bringing in some shapes, some details here at the top to break up the top area of the sky. Now I'm only going to do this for this top area because once we get down into the yellow area, I don't want any of this gray color to be there. Now, I do want to keep it quite broken, so we're getting some of the blue patchiness coming through. If you feel like you've gone too far, press and hold the eraser. Now when you tap on it, you'll see it's also got the soft brush that you were using before. We're just gonna turn the size to 6%, and we'll put the opacity a little bit higher than 10% for the eraser. We'll put it about 40%. So you can just get rid of one or two of these pieces if you feel like you've gone overboard. You can alternate between the brush and the eraser just so you can feel like you're getting the right amount. Maybe I'll close it more at the slight top area. Then we get some of the blue coming through and then we're gonna stay on the same layer. So we're on layer four and we're gonna to go to the fifth color along and you can see it's within the red, almost orange, but it is grayed out again. And we're just gonna aim. In fact, we'll do a smaller brush. We'll put it at about 3% size and just at the lower parts of these gray clumps, we're just gonna add a hint of this color, slightly warmer color, and we can allow it to come down into the yellow areas as well. So I'm just doing it in dashes. I'm only pressing on lightly. So 
something like that. It's just creating a little bit more noise, a little bit more texture in the background, but there's going to be more elements that we're going to put over the top, so you're not really going to notice the subtleties too much. We're going to go back to our layers, create another layer, go back to our colours. We've used the first five, now we're going for a darker colour. Second in from the right, it's still very much within the red, but it's quite a lot darker, less saturated. So we're just going to go back to the brushes, we're going to go for the elements, and we're going to use the cloud brush this time. Now all the brushes I'm using within this tutorial are free within Procreate, but if you fancy experimenting with a different variety of brushes, then you might want to head over to the sponsor of this video, Brush Galaxy. It's a brilliant brush subscription website service with over 20,000 premium Procreate brushes. You can save over 90% of the cost by subscribing and paying monthly, and it's got tons of different categories such as portrait, pattern, texture, nature, and loads more. If you subscribe today, you get the first seven days free. You can unlock up to 12 brush packs for free, worth over $300. The links are in the comments and also the video description. We have a brand new layer, layer five. We haven't put anything on it yet. We're gonna reduce the size of the brush to about 5% and we reduce the opacity to about 50% opacity. And we're just gonna begin tapping in some textures with this cloud. Now it's already a bit more textural than perhaps you would get if we use something like the soft brush, which I often use in my tutorials. Often I like to do them more manually, kind of control them manually all myself, but I thought I'd try experimenting with a clouds brush, make it a little bit easier perhaps if you're trying to create this dramatic effect. So if you're struggling with the textures, this should really help quite a little bit. So we'll just increase the size of the brush to 7% opacity, start to introduce some more broken bigger textures now. So I'm allowing the cloud to condense in some areas, some wisps in some areas that are drifting off. Again, allowing it to condense, really go over and over it if I need to. Maybe over here, there's just some wisps that have got away, not really attached to a big clump anymore. They're just on their own. I think that will do. Now, if you want to soften it, you can go to your adjustments, go to your cause and blur, affect the whole layer and just soften it in slightly just take the edge off, don't go too far, but it's something around the 4%. You don't want to blur it too much. A little bit of that effect goes quite a long way, but 4% really works. I'm going to create another layer. I'm going to be using this end color now. We're still going to be using the clouds brushes, and I'm still going to have it at the 7% size, but I'll turn the opacity up to about 60%, and we'll start introducing some of these features a little bit lower a bit more dramatic, a bit more condensed. So I'm allowing them in some areas to stay wispy, but then some areas I want them to condense. I can go over and over over it until I get a dark, more saturated version. And then I'm going to continue over this side. So I'm just doing circular motions just to get in large bands of this color and then I can go in and adjust the edges, refine a little bit. Now I'm gonna go over this with a lighter color just to nearly knock some of this back, but we're not at that stage yet. So we just need to get the base color in first. I can zoom in just a little bit and I'm just going to really focus on the edges, reduce the size of the brush to 5%, just be a little bit more specific with some of the edges, more details, round shapes that stick out. And like I say, just as we get towards the edge, maybe we get some slightly more broken textures, more drifting away bits.
If you want to check out more of my personal work, then I've got a brand new website that's been built by an amazing web designer, Shaban Idrisu. Uh, there's a link down in the video description to both my website and his website. Check out both our work. He's done a fantastic version, I feel. Okay, so we're gonna do pretty similar again. We're gonna to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, affect the whole layer, and we're just gonna blur it in to about the 4% again, or thereabouts. I need to create a new layer, go back to the colors, and I'm gonna use this red color. And I'm also gonna go back to the soft brush, and I'm gonna increase the size of the brush quite dramatically to about 15% size but I don't want it too high on the opacity, I want it about 10%. And just at the bottom area here, I want to start increasing the warmth. I want to add some red. I'm adding it predominantly on the edge here and lower. Maybe a touch over this side, leaving a little bit in the center and I'm gonna have that a bit more yellow rather than red. And then I'm gonna take it lower down into this lower bit of the landscape as well. Okay, go back to our colors, or layers rather, create another layer, back to our colors now, and we'll select this second color in. I'm gonna go back to the elements and clouds brush, and we'll have it about, about 5%, and 60% opacity seems to work well. So we're just going to introduce some really nice dark textures over at this side in this foreground area. Again, circular motions, want the nice round shapes with some broken bits as well. I'm gonna start over on this side as well. So, so have little sections that are fragmenting off. It is important to break it up, especially at the edges. Then I'm gonna switch the colors back to the red color, turn the opacity down to about 30% for the red and introduce it at the edges just to blend it in. Then I'm just going to increase the size of the red to about 15%. And I'm going to introduce more of it down at the bottom, blend it in a little bit more. Go back to the second color along again, turn the brush down to 5%. I'm just going to leave the opacity at 30% and a little bit more subtle and start creating some more broken textures in this lower section, more clumps. In fact, Let's turn the size of the brush down even more to about 3% and really define more specific some of these little textures in this lower area. Okay, we're going to create another layer and we're going to put it underneath this layer. And I think it's about time we start adding a bright element of the sun. Go back to our colors. We're gonna use this bright yellow. It's a really bold color. We're gonna to go to our brushes. We're gonna to go to the airbrushing and the soft brush. And in terms of the size, we're gonna put it in about 8% size and about 20% opacity. We're gonna put it right in the very center. It's not gonna be a complica complicated composition this time. We're just gonna concentrate on the effects. So we're gonna put a really nice yellow center in that area and then extend a light strokes around it, really extend it larger, but lighter. A few taps in the very center. And again, just expand it out lightly, barely touching the screen, letting it expand. In fact, we can go to the adjustments, we we'll go to the Gaussian blur and the layer, and we can just slide it across to about the 20%, back to our colors, go to the white this time, and we're just gonna go into the very center and ramp up that bright white, really bring out the light and drama of the piece. Now, if we want to make this extra sharp, we can go to the adjustments. We go to the bloom setting, again, the layer, and we'll slide it across. Now, you don't need to go too far. In this example, about 6% looks great. What we might need to do now is just remove some of the clouds that don't look good. It looks better if you remove them as we can see. So we're just gonna go to the eraser and we'll just get rid certainly of this lower section 
and well maybe we'll get rid of all of it i think it might actually look more dramatic if we can see the sun we can go over with a soft brush if we want to add more elements go back to the sun layer and i'm just going to go to this yellow again let's check the size it's on eight percent size and 20 percent opacity let's reduce it we'll put it at four percent size and about 15 percent opacity and i want to start extending the impact of this yellow across from the sun into those banks of clouds on either side so i'm just lightly taking it over it's underneath the layer that has the dark color so you don't need to worry too much i'm just going to go around the edges it's not going to really interfere so i'll just sharpen that brush in fact so i put it about two percent size and i can really define those edges and more precisely go around those edges Now, you can have some broken clumps that have, you know, don't need to have the dark elements to them. They can just be floating and just the yellow on its own. Floating away from the main blocks.
go back to the orange. I'm going to stay on the same layer. I'm not going to bother swapping and changing layers. I'm just adding some highlights to the bottom, the underside of this cloud, perhaps the bright the sun is just, just touching the edge of that cloud there, of this cloud bank. Again, I'm pressing very lightly. I'm not changing the settings still on 3% or 2% size and 30% opacity. And I'm just using it really light to pick up some subtle details on the bottom areas there. Really light, really subtle. Now, you can use this color onto other areas here. You can spend ages on this. I'm really not going into massive amounts of detail. I'm just starting to try and get the overall effect for you. Spend as long as you like on this. Try and get it as sharp as possible. But I'm just going to go back a couple of layers onto layer four add some of the dark gray at the very top. I think it needs a little bit more of that. So I've gone the gray, put it at about 5% size and 20% opacity. Just close down some of the, the light at the top, add a bit more gray, a bit more of the texture going all the way across. And the same with the next color. So we use the gray, we're going for this slightly more pinky version. Extend the influence of that a little bit further down into the scene. Back to layer eight. Last minute changes, go to the red. Have a bit more of the red coming in. So reduce it down to about 2% size and 30% opacity. And just going to have it encroaching into the center area there a little bit more, a little bit bolder, a bit thicker. Alternate between that and the yellow. And then the dark color encroaching a bit more. Go back to the yellow for the highlights. Again, just play around, sharpening up some of the edges. Just make them a little bit more extreme if it needs it. Okay, it's the kind of thing you can play away, around with and refine for hours and hours and hours. But I just want, like I said, I just want to get you to the basic overall effect. And I feel we've pretty much reached that stage now. I hope that's been helpful as a tutorial for you. So if you've enjoyed the tutorial, make sure to share any of your results on Instagram with me. The links for my Instagram and Facebook are down in the video description itself. Subscribe, press the bell notification button, and I hope to catch you back here soon. See you later.